Hello, my name is Arthur. In the last video, we got our application functioning so that it could close down properly and iterate through tabs to prompt on unsaved tabs. And in this video, we're going to move forward into doing uh, the cut button. So we'll do our first cut something to the clipboard. And before we do that, I'm going to just scroll up the script to make sure that what the current script look like has been shown. There's been no changes since the last update to the script. Um, I'm going to start off by changing a couple of things. Um, make a convenience function to stop typing a certain line over and over again. And maybe change the name of a variable to shorten it up because it doesn't need to be as doesn't need to be wordy or overly long or anything. So yeah, in the last video I mentioned um, we added in the undo and redo to the edit submenu. And I was thinking that they're probably in the wrong order. So I'm just going to change the order of those really quickly and put them up top. And that way with them up top it'll remind me that, geez, I need to figure those two out. The undo and the redo are not that simple. But something that I do need to figure out. Now, the thing I want to stop writing over and over again and change the nature of is this line. Um... I want to, I'm going to change the variable from page num, where it's used repeatedly, to just down to PG for page, because it doesn't need to be long. It doesn't need to be integer the page number of the currently open tab. Um, it's a very straightforward and obvious purpose variable that. And then I'm going to create a function to get that value because that's going to increase. Um, I think so far this has been, this statement has been typed, I think it's six or seven times. And um, page num has been typed 33 times. So let's make a variable because we haven't even got to the part where we repeatedly access um, indexes in the book for cut, paste, um, search, all of the functions are going to need to do that. So let's make um, a function, we'll call it current tab. And we'll just go like this. We'll make it return. We'll just put in a semicolon for now. And that'll be the function. So first off, we'll change page num. So we'll use search and replace. That got 33 matches. And I'm just going to change it to page. So we'll replace all of those. And now they're just PG. Then the next thing I'm going to replace is this whole statement. So we can take this whole statement. Put it in there and we'll change that now if we've selected the semicolon we would have to type the semicolon in here but it's best to not select it because that way we're not presuming that everywhere that that's used has a semicolon at the end which is not really a safe presumption so we'll change that to current tab as a function call and let's spell that right or things are going to go south so we'll replace all of those now every time we need a current a page number we can just call current tab so we'll save that and this is a good time to look at the undo and redo buttons because if this went south 
what are we going to do? We're going to undo it, right? So that's a function that I do need to figure out. So we'll just test compile. And the problem there is that I didn't place this into the function. So it's not returning the value that it needs to return. So let's give a value to return to that function to make it do what it's supposed to do. So that gets us working. Everything will work the same. Um, usually if this went south, changing things using search and replace, um, the result of it going south would be immediately obvious. Let's make something unsaved. Let's close a tab. Let's close a tab. And let's close down. Close and discard. So that looks like everything's working. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in the cut function. So we'll make the cut button work. So we'll need a GDK clipboard, which we'll call clipboard. And I don't know if this will stay global. I'm just going to make it global to start. Um, I haven't decided if the function for cut paste and copy should all be one function or should be three different functions so for now we're just going to call it cut text we'll scroll down to the button click the function that's called on a button click and we'll add in cut Whoops. That was a mistake. Well, I think now that we've cut that, it's actually in the text buffer. And it would actually be good to know if that's the case, because that way we know the behavior that cut button should demonstrate. So we'll change this to cut. Well, function call cut text. It doesn't receive any values. So that gets the cut button able to be recognized and go to its function. So we'll come up to its function. So probably the first thing here is gboolean check. So what we're going to want to do is to check if there's something in the text buffer selection. So we'll go through the text buffer documentation. The function we want to use is get has selection. In order to get that, um, we need to know a page number. So int page equals current tab. So now we don't have to type out that long statement to get the page number. Then we'll go check equals. Let's get that so we can read it off. GDK text buffer get has selection. That will return a boolean book page buff and that is a comma not a period we need a period not a comma okay so here we'll test if we found a selection or if there was no selection so if there was no selection, 
return and I'm just going to make that a one liner. So now we know that there's a selection. Now some of the time, a lot of the stuff that I learn, I learn from the documentation and it's, um, I'm able to get what I need from it, but sometimes I'm not. So I look for things like examples and there's some f fair examples for very simple things that help me to get started. And I found this example for how to initialize the clipboard. So this is the sentence right here to initialize a clipboard. And that gets me started with the ability to um, do that. So if we haven't returned, we need a value for our clipboard. So clipboard equals GDK, oops, GDK clipboard get GDK, not GT, because um, GDK is different than GTK. It has something to do with text, I believe. So in this example, it points out that there's GD selection, GDK selection primary, selection secondary, but it uses this one. So I'm assuming this is the best option to use. So we'll go back to the text buffer. The text buffer has cut clipboard, copy clipboard, as well as paste pit clipboard. So now we're just going to cut the clipboard. So we'll cut the selection to the clipboard, which is, that's what it says. And that's why we're testing if there's a selection. Because if there's not a selection, it should just stop doing this anyways. So GDK text buffer cut to clipboard. Our buffer is book at index page dot buff comma our clipboard is called clipboard comma true which is um, default editability of the buffer and our buffers are editable because it's a text editing type of effort we're doing here. And I believe that's it. I'm pretty sure that'll get us to a point where we can um, cut paste using the button. So we'll open that in the terminal. We'll attempt. To... Okay, we have a typo. Board. Let's spell that right. That should get us there. Hopefully just the one typo. So that gets us open. We'll open a tab. We'll load a document. This is an active script, so we don't want to save over this. Um, we'll select a chunk of it. We'll cut it. It cuts out. Let's paste that into another document to make sure it's in our buffer. So we have that there, and let's make sure that we're able to cross over into another software that are where the clipboard has it isn't just distinctive to our application. So it's in the clipboard available to paste into other places as well. So that's pretty much it. That gets us... Um, that gets us our cut button functioning. I don't anticipate copy and paste will be much different. 
and yeah well I'm preparing to do these I'll be looking into undo and redo which these are more complicated so I'm really not sure how to get those going or how to get it to act in the same fashion as this software acts see these buttons this button is enabled because there is an action to undo there is no action un, undone action to redo um, there's nothing selected to cut or copy so the buttons are inactive but it knows that there is a selection that there is something in the clipboard so that is active so how to get these buttons to active and and not active is another thing to be looking into just to get the same type of behavior in the application but these are all things like undo redo and making buttons active and not i haven't gotten to these things yet so that's it for this video that gets us um, a quick and easy function to to cut selected text out of a document and paste it and that paste and it is going into a system clipboard that the text is available to paste in a search bar or paste in our other software so that seems to be functioning the way that we want it to function. So in the next video we'll do, maybe we can manage both copy and paste in the same video and try to speed the pace up a little bit. And until then, take care.